Breakfast today is maple venison sausage quiche, and I have another video that includes the recipe for that. I'm getting some work done for Bally. If you're interested, there will be a link below. Josh has his serving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to be on your diet. That's awesome. Yeah. All you have to do is gain 80 more pounds of muscle. And Perfect. Set. Perfect. I'll do that right now. Jer, Jer. Have Daddy give you your treat. She needs her medicine. Jerry, you're lucky Daddy's quiche is cooling. Okay. All right, we got it. We got it. Sit pretty. Be nicer Here. with your voice. Sit pretty. <laughs> So today my leg workout consisted of 12 front rate or 12 um, front squats with the cable machine and then I supersetted that with 20 each leg of the frog walk so you can break it up however you want. You'll see me, I actually filmed my last set so I was like struggling towards the end. Um, and then I did three sets of 10 single leg leg press and you'll notice on the video that I actually went really high on the actual platform that's to really help isolate the glutes. And then I did a series of forward lunge, back lunge, squat, switch legs, superset kind of thing. I did that two rounds on each side, so four total. Do it as many times as you can. I used the 45 pound plate for reference. Use whatever you need to do. Now, I'm going to do glute kickbacks. And I know a lot of women, you know, online say, I, I love this exercise and I see a lot of people do it. However, I really feel it either in my, my stationary leg or my lower back or things like that. So Josh. What up? 
actually went to school for exercise physiology, had was an academic American, athletic American, 4.0 GPA, and really knows the biomechanics of the human body. So he is going to actually take us through a little how to do a glute kickback on the cable machine and really, really, really get a lot out of this. You see that benefit from doing the glute kickbacks on the cable machine. So take her away. Okay, so step number one, you want to get a different attachment. Not this. <laughs> that is wrong. That is wrong. That is wrong. You don't need an education to know that. You can use it. Or if your gym has like the ankle strap thing where you can buy one. I have one, but I don't know where it is. Okay. Real quick, before Sarah gets started, I want to give you guys a little rundown here. First of all, every person is going to be a little different because your guys' legs are different lengths. So you're going to have to take what I say, not with a grain of salt, just kind of like as a, uh, is that better? <laughs> kind I'm of. showing that people have different leg lengths. Yeah. So I may have to do a kickback different than Sarah because my leg's a lot longer than hers. Um, but anyway, so use it as a guideline to kind of, uh, almost like a starting program for you to kind of figure it out yourself. So, again, here we go. Alright. Okay, so Sarah picked the wrong leg for me. But that's okay. He's giving you a show. Okay, go ahead. Alright, so some things that you guys can do. Obviously, if you look where the pulley's coming from. Go ahead and kick back. It's a straight line, keep that back here, just like this. See how the cable goes straight under the knee? Straight line, right down the leg. That's one way that you can do a kickback. Now, another way that you could do a kickback is change your angle. Turn your body this way, wrong way, turn it the other way. Okay. So, yes, now kick more outward. There you go. So now you can watch as Sarah does this. So all she did, if you look here, go ahead. See how the cable is now on the outside of her knee? It's not in a straight line of her knee. What this is gonna do is help hit the medial head of the glute, which is the upper glute here. What should my back be doing? Parallel? You, just, you wanna always try to keep your back, kind of think of a cat arcing. It's called convexing. So that's all you want to keep doing. So again, keep that back arced. And this is, again, there's no wrong way to doing this, it's just different. So, why'd you stop? I switched legs. No way, just keep doing the same leg. So again, you can try keeping the cable on the inside of your leg. Um, again, so angle this way now, turn this way. No, 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 no. Just twist your hips. Oh. Now keep the cable on the inside of your knee. No, it, in, it's on the inside. Yep, I know. There you go. Okay. So Sarah, tell everyone where you feel that. More on the top knee part. Yep, yep. Inside, right? Yeah. So again, you guys can do all the different kinds of angles here. And it's not like one is gonna be better than the other. Just figure out which one works best for you and see which one you feel the glute activation in the most. So again, there's, there's not a wrong way of doing it. It's just try to figure out the way that, that best fits your body. And um, there's a lot of different things that you can do with a lot of different exercises. Some people feel it in deadlifts more than squats. Some people feel it in squats more than deadlifts. But kickbacks is an absolute guaranteed way to hit your glutes without activating a ton of your quad or hamstrings um, like a lot of the big compound movements such as deadlifts or squats actually do. So again, if you're trying to build just your butt and not really build a lot of your quads or hamstrings, kickbacks is going to be a really good glute exercise. All right, friends, so I'm going to make protein hot chocolate. Okay, this works best if your protein is super chocolatey, like ours. You can get it at bullmorefitness.com. On in there. Stir it up. 
And there you have it, protein hot chocolate. Super simple. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because we are making protein Christmas cookies. Look, look at them. Okay, so we've got all of our Christmas items. I also have a kitty cat that I'm gonna make, and a Yoda, and an R2-D2, and a Darth Vader. Shotgun on the... The gingerbread man? The gingerbread man. We've got our sprinkles, we've got all of our ingredients, we've got Jerry. We're really excited. You're not allowed to have any of that, Jerry. <laughs> Why is she sitting like a human? So, this is a um, recipe that I found on Pinterest, so I cannot take credit for this. So, okay. So we are going to do, bye Jer. Three. Bye Jerry. Bye Jer Jer. Get away from us. <laughs> Yep. So protein, so we're gonna do three scoops of vanilla protein. How many cookies is this making? I don't know yet, it doesn't say. Okay. Well, let's... For all of you wanting to see what protein we use, it's our own brand. Heck yeah. Tastes amazing. Shout out to us. 75 servings. Check out the macros. So now we're doing one cup of whole wheat flour. Try to be healthy. We're gonna keep this out. This looks like it will make a lot of cookies. No. One quarter cup almond flour. I'm just gonna give it a really good texture. Just gonna give it a nice texture. Nice. Okay. A little baking powder. How much? Um, it says a teaspoon. Just dump that egg. egg in there. One tablespoon. I'm gonna add this slowly because you want it to remain that cookie dough consistency for cutout cookies. Oh, I forgot the coconut sugar. Here, I'll keep stirring. And here. This says one cup coconut sugar. We're not gonna put that much in. How much do you think you should put in? None. No, we have to put some in. There's nothing sweet in this. Quarter cup? I would do what the recipe calls for. How many carbs are in a cup? Quite a bit. We'll do a quarter cup. Of coconut sugar. Alright, while well you whisk, whiskey boy, we are going to bake at 350. It's flour so that way it doesn't stick to the counter. Now she might need a roller. Oh, I see. This Gatorade bottle should work. No. Why not? No, it won't. So obviously a roller would be a lot easier, but you know what? You make do with what you have. Okay. Oh no. Do we not put enough flour down on the first on the bottom? No. Gotta be flexible in life, you know? We could have gotten bent out of shape over this, we could have lost our minds over this. All right, so now we're going to make protein frosting for our protein reeds and then do some sprinkles. So I'm going to do white, green, and red. I'm going to do one scoop of the vanilla protein and then add yogurt accordingly so that it's a frosting texture. Added a little bit of green. Do you like this green? That's a really pretty green. Yes, perfect green. Perfect green for the wreaths? Yes. Okay, and red is very difficult to do. 
However, I'm going to attempt it. Usually just turns out pink. That's how it works out. However, for some reason, this actually turned out red. My mom's gonna be jealous. I have to send her a picture. Look at that. Turned out red, not pink. Hmm. Okay, and then we're just gonna keep this in the fridge until those are done. The wreaths are done. It took about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna get them out to cool. All right. Oh wow, I didn't. Okay, I'm done with mine. Perfection takes time. Oh, those are beautiful. You didn't see that coming, did you, baby? I didn't.